dollars um, that are provided. And it's also to uh, allow just some context for you to provide some input on our spending plan and how we will be using these monies within Tucson Unified School District. So first, uh, ESSER uh, Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief. So this is based off of stimulus uh, funds and stimulus packages through the federal government. So that's what ESSER uh, stands for. And to begin, All right, to begin, we have uh, actually three different uh, rounds of ESSER that has come out. So ESSER 1, this was uh, just over a year ago. This was at the beginning of the um, uh, COVID pandemic. And I should say all of these stimulus funds uh, are in response to the, the COVID pandemic. They were uh, initially released for um, relief to the schools as we dealt with a lot of the, the different requirements coming from the COVID pandemic. So ESSER 1 was from last summer. This was $18.5 million that our district received. And that was primarily used for our immediate response to a lot of the, the health and safety requirements of COVID. Uh, a lot of this went towards PPE requirements within our district, so masks, gloves, and then also a lot of the cleaning and sanitation and, and sterilizing that we did in the schools. Um, and so that was where the majority of ESSER 1 went. ESSER 1 also was used to retain some of our staff. So during the pandemic, uh, without students in the schools, things like bus drivers and food service staff, um, without uh, having roles and jobs and the income from something like food service, were actually at, at um, could possibly have been laid off during that time. And this allowed us to keep them employed and keep our employees employed through the pandemic. ESSER 2, we received last spring. So this was uh, around like March, February, March, uh, ESSER 2 allocations came out. This was a second stimulus package from the federal government. This provided our district $76.3 million. And this is primarily has gone into the schools. And a lot of the design on this has started from the schools themselves. We surveyed the staff within our district. Schools uh, had proposals. The principals met with their leadership team, their site council. And then um, we have also, at this point, presented that to the governing board, and they've approved our spending plan for that. So ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 have been allocated and have already been uh, pushed out to the schools. ESSER 3, so in the red there, this is where we want to get input tonight. ESSER 3 was a little different. Uh, the federal government, when they released this stimulus plan, uh, they had some additional requirements, one of which was having uh, what they refer to as meaningful consultation with stakeholders or essentially input from all the stakeholders that are involved with our schools. So we've, we've received input from the staff. Uh, we've received input um, from uh, community and different bargaining units within our district. And tonight we want to receive input from the larger community families and, and community members uh, to just give us some ideas, uh, provide some input, and, and really identify needs that you're aware of in the schools so that we are, can ensure that the dollars coming from ESSER 3 get to those areas of need. Uh, ESSER 3 was $172.9 million, and you can see the dates to the right, and I, I skipped over this earlier, the dates to the right is when that grant ends. So we have until September 30th, 2024, before that uh, money expires. Each one of these grants, or each one of these is a grant through the federal government. So it has, um, it, it has different requirements associated with it. And it actually is a grant. We have to gather uh, what we're gonna spend this on, put it into a grant, apply, and go through an approval process with it. So there is quite a bit of management that goes on with this, but um, we do wanna receive your input. So when we build ESSER 3, we're able to meet the needs that you have and, uh, that you're aware of in our schools or needs that you see in our schools. This next slide, uh, again, deals specifically with ESSER 3, and these are some of the requirements that were coming with this federal grant. First of all, that first bullet, meaningful consultation, providing input from the community and stakeholders associated with our schools. Secondly, 20% uh, of the funds from ESSER 3 are, we have to uh, identify and use those to address learning loss. A lot of this is intervention-based uh, approaches. Summer school applies here, additional uh, tutoring and extended day opportunities at our school. 
All of those are, are uh, evidence-based interventions that would meet that need of using 20% of the funds for learning loss. Uh, third item there is uh, address academic impact. Um, and so that academic impact, make sure I'm doing this right, of the instructional time is similar to the learning loss, but this again is providing interventions. Uh, an additional area that uh, was identified there is the academic, social, emotional, and mental health needs of students. So this, this involves things like counselors and social workers um, providing additional support just outside of just exclusively the academics, which we've done, but also kind of the whole well-rounded approach to um, meeting the needs of our students. So that is something that even with the, the previous uh, grant, ESSER II, uh, we've really looked at ways to get additional social workers and counselors and support into the schools. Uh, and then we want to, again, be able to do that with ESSER III. Uh, another item for ESSER III is vulnerable student populations. So uh, these are uh, subgroups identified through Arizona Department of Education, uh, primarily through academics they were identified, but they are identified groups in each of our schools. Uh, that need additional support academically to get up to the standards. Uh, finally, the last two items, uh, prevention and mitigation strategies. So continuing with a lot of the uh, safety protocols that we've had in place through the CDC, uh, and those have changed. So as you know, even just recently in the last couple of weeks, um, guidance from the uh, governor and then changes in CDC, we just constantly are kind of responding to the the shifts that happened there but this this money is designed to make sure that we're meeting those and um, still keeping that safe and healthy environment open in the schools for our kids and then finally um, we have to develop a plan from all of this so your input is involved with our actual spending plan and then we have to do some updates uh, by the first day of school uh, you will see some plans some re-entry plans for our district uh, and then that gets updated every six months as, as we get updates from uh, the, the Arizona Department of Education, Governor's Office, uh, CDC and the like. So that is something that is part of these requirements for ESSER three as an updated plan. This slide uh, kind of summarizes seven areas and these are the, the seven main categories that ESSER three can be used on. So academic loss, educational technology, mental health and social emotional learning, recruitment and retention, pers uh, personal protective equipment or PPE, distance learning and minimizing transmission. Uh, these are the, the broad areas. These are the same um, categories that we used when we worked with our staff, when we worked with our schools and developing their spending plans for their school. So these are uh, again, the same set of uh, uh, categories that we used with our schools. And we're gonna use these later on tonight and we wanna get your ideas and your input around these seven areas. So we'll come back to this slide in a second, but these are the categories that we wanna be able to um, have your ideas and your input fit into. Each one of these categories also, I'll remind you, uh, is connected directly to COVID and the pandemic. Uh, that is the, the main purpose of this money is, is in response to and in recovery uh, from the uh, COVID pandemic. So this is something that um, just to keep in mind, it always needs to point back to uh, the COVID pandemic, and this is in response and recovery to that. This is a quick summary of our staff survey. So we uh, sent uh, our staff, uh, I think this was actually in April, a uh, survey to get their feedback and guidance. So you can see uh, these are the four main areas that they, the four, I guess, the top areas that had the, uh, the biggest response. So uh, academic loss, technology, social, emotional, mental health support, and retention. Uh, each one of these areas uh, is also a main component of the school plans and the school proposals that principals have put forward. So this is just the, kind of the alignment piece that we're seeing between staff and their suggestions and what the principals are also identifying. And we wanna be able to get uh, similar information from you tonight to see it, if it aligns, and if there are other areas that we need to direct these funds towards. This is a summary of the school requests. So um, we kind of just broke this out into nine different areas, but intervention, so reading and math intervention, things like teaching assistance in the classroom, that is something that we've already started putting um, our ESSER II funding towards. Curriculum service providers, these work with the, the teachers in the school and, and really help refine and, and make the curriculum 
and the, the strategies with it effective. Multi-tier system of support. This is students and a little um, focused in, in helping students uh, with behavior and then also in the classroom in the school environment. Uh, counselors and the support that we all know is very important coming from our, our counselors. Uh, social emotional programs. Um, this is, uh, uh, it deals with, I, I guess our social workers is the first thing it's to say. We are trying to get additional social workers into our schools. The, the schools themselves have identified that as a big need. Um, and then the, uh, the social emotional programs that go along with that to support it. Uh, supplemental curriculum, enrichment specialists and teachers, outdoor learning spaces, and school furniture and equipment. These are all items that, uh, these are the top items from the schools, but these are all uh, eligible categories of, of things that will help the schools in response to the COVID pandemic. Okay, in this slide, you'll see um, on the left hand, a list of items that were eligible to be used, to use ESSER funding for. This was generated from all of our principals providing proposals for their schools. So this, is, this list is actually um, about 400 items and I'm just showing you the very beginning of it uh, alphabetically with the A's, but these are the sort of items that our schools got very specific in, in saying they needed to help and you know, kind of come back to school and, and get our kids ready, get the schools ready uh, to start school again. So the first one there, I'll just start with the active panels and Promethean boards. Those are actually educational technology in the classroom and, and the shift that schools have seen happen with kids using a lot more technology uh, during the pandemic in the virtual learning. This is, this is principals basically requesting this so that the, the classroom environment is ready to handle that technology that's coming in. So if you go across on that first line item, you see the number 67. That means 67 schools uh, out of our 88 requested that specific item. And then as you see down, you know, you go down the left-hand side and move to your right across uh, the rows there uh, or the columns, you'll see certain counts. And so this list is, is very extensive, um, but uh, this is important to the schools. These are things that the schools identified, and these are areas that we want to start addressing with our ESSER funds. So lastly, this will be our last slide. Uh, this is where we want to get your input. We want to get your input around these seven categories and your ideas um, and, and really the needs that you are aware of in the schools that uh, we can start directing this money towards and, and to start really having an impact with it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this off to Leslie. I'll, I'll leave this slide up here. And these are the seven areas we want to get your feedback on uh, for ESSER funds. Great, thank you, John. Um, perfect, well, I know um, what where we are now is what we'd like to do is have um, any of, uh, we only have a few people actually on the Zoom, but we do have a few questions coming in through Facebook um, or, or comments. Um, so I know that Jillian Free, Freeland, excuse me, um, would like to share a few ideas. So Jillian, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jillian. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to hear from you directly about the investments we're making as a result of the COVID pandemic. Um, I think one of the important things to take away from this is a lot of these things are things that uh, educators have been begging for uh, pre-pandemic. And so to have these funds to invest in our students is incredibly exciting. Um, I would like to press the importance of mental health support, um, even Again, before the pandemic, we knew that we did not have enough counselors and social workers in school, which these are the folks who are the front line of intervening if there is a, a problem going on at home. And what we are seeing is an increase in domestic violence, in overdose, um, and in uh, many things that we need students to have contact with mental health professionals and sc schools are the place to do it. And so, um, I really just wanna press the importance of access for every single child uh, to mental health uh, uh, professionals. And additionally point out that investment in personal protective equipment and you know, excellent ventilation does not only prevent the spread of COVID, it makes kids safer from other airborne respiratory illnesses as well. And so um, these investments are going to be things that have long-term impacts, I hope. And I am uh, very glad to see these funds being allocated. So. Thank you. 
Thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. Freeland. Um, Carla, do you have any um, ideas that have been shared on Facebook? Um, yes, we have one comment by Kristen Burry. Um, she says, diagnostic program for students learning within the first three weeks of school, not school city based. That is her entire comment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, does anyone else on the Zoom call have um, information or an idea that they'd like to share or make sure that we consider? If not, it's going to be a very quick meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, but for those people that are watching us through Facebook, Leslie, I just want to um, send out a quick note that if they have been watching and they'd like to share something to put, put, put it in the comments, either if it's a question or a comment or some opinion that they have, we're more than welcome to read it to the, to the team that it's on Zoom. Perfect. Yes. Thanks, Carla. So John, can you share maybe um, while we're waiting any of the timelines that we're looking at of receiving the funds and how uh, and when SR2 funds might be um, begin to be allocated if they haven't already? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and go back to this slide here. So um, yeah, SR2 right now is is kind of our active grant. Uh, all the schools have uh, submitted budgets. Uh, each school has a, a set of just individualized needs from their school and different approaches. And some of it just depends on on what services they had in place. So um, you know, one of the the things that we've done with SR2 is try to ensure that all our schools and all of our students across TUSD have access to a core set of, of support. So uh, every school is trying to increase uh, intervention and get additional interventionists in there for the academic support. So that's maybe uh, to the, the comment of, I think off of Facebook of early diagnostics, getting interventionists in every single one of the schools. Uh, we also want to make sure our teachers and, and with coming back to the classroom are supported with the curriculum and the new strategies. So we want to get a curriculum service provider in every single one of the schools. Uh, ESSER 2 is also supporting additional MTSS facilitators or uh, strategies in every one of the schools. So schools have all put money into that. Counselors, um, schools are also for with ESSER 2. Uh, currently, we want to increase the counselor count in every single one of the schools. Maybe an easy way to explain that is um, majority of our elementary schools have a half-time counselor. ESSER has provided the opportunity to allow those schools to have a full-time counselor uh, going into this school year. So increase uh, counseling support in every single school. And then finally, um, social work. So this is, I think, uh, Jillian uh, Freeland was mentioning the, the additional support for mental health services. So social work, uh, social emotional learning curriculums, uh, this is something that ESSER 2 is, is providing in every single one of the schools. So uh, our, our goal would be to have, you know, social worker support in every single school. Uh, ESSER 2 provides the money to make that happen. Uh, and then across our district, um, they'll start hearing about social emotional uh, uh, strategies and curriculums within the school. So that is, um, Kind of ESSER 2 has tried to get that in every single one of the schools so all of our kids have access to that. In addition to that, ESSER 2 is providing flexibility for the schools to uh, provide different, um, I guess, learning environments for the kids. So uh, outdoor learning spaces, um, that is something that, you know, we, we know majority of the, the school year in Tucson is beautiful outside, you know, starting about October and being able to get kids out of the, the cramped classrooms and outside a little little more. Uh, SR2 is providing an opportunity to do that in our schools. Uh, it's providing an opportunity for us to uh, provide different uh, settings in the classroom where kids can, can spread out a little more access to additional instructional supports in the classroom. So SR2 is doing that through all our schools and actively, um, its principals are actively uh, basically hiring people with SR2 money right now, and we're close to being able to start to purchase items with SR2. So SR2 is 
is going. We're right in the middle of it. And, and principals, you know, I think ask your principals about it. Um, if you are a, um, a family that has uh, kids in our schools, uh, this is something that they're actively using the monies for in the schools right now. Uh, that will, the end date on that is September 30th, 2023. But um, kind of what we're looking at is ESSER 2 is, is really kind of this school year. We want this in the schools for our kids right now, uh, investing in them. And then ESSER 3 is looking a couple years out. Uh, that goes through September uh, 2024. So we have, you know, about three years that we can start using that. So uh, we're not using uh, ESSER 3 monies at this time. We want to get all the input we can. Uh, make sure we have a, a meaningful plan put together and then, you know, down the road, um, start to use that money when we need it. Um, John, we have a um, couple of comments, one question and one comment uh, from Tina Huerta on our Facebook. Um, Tina says, would this be considered a meaningful consultation? Didn't we do a survey earlier this year? If you can um, answer that and then I'll, I'll read her other comments. Yes, yeah, so this is our, our con one of our consultations we've had. We have three of them planned, um, but we also gathered information through surveys. I mean, we, we want to gather it as many ways as we can. Um, so definitely surveys did happen. That is um, was a step that we took early on, even before this requirement was out. We just got these requirements about a month ago. So before this you know, became a step that we knew we had to take, um, we were already trying to gather information from folks. Thank you, John. She, um, Tina Huerta continues, I would consider many more headphones. Learners tend to use them heavily and they go through wear quite quickly. It might be even be considered an ongoing supply. Good, good point. So, I, and you know, it's funny, we just kind of, we lived it, you know, virtual learning and I just kind of skipped right over it. Uh, ESSER 1 uh, bought our initial, the initial rounds of laptops for students to use at home. Uh, ESSER 2 is continuing that. We know many of these need updated. Um, we know our teachers need access to, to additional technology and headphones is actually in there. So uh, having headphones um, that kids can use now at the school site, charging stations, you know, kind of the whole instructional environment has changed quite a bit. Um, so yeah, technology was huge in there. And um, yeah, it's kind of funny. I just it's kind of skipped right over it because it's what we do now, but uh, that is embedded in each one of these. Great, thanks, John. Um, we have a comment from the Wood family. Do, would you like to go ahead and share that or I can read what you wrote in the chat? Okay, um, I'll go ahead and read what they wrote. They said, we're glad to see TUSD has purchased HEPA filters for classrooms, uh, but from the feedback from TUSD, we're concerned that units have not been sized to the room correctly. This There's a link below, which I'll copy and um, provide your team um, provides insight as to um, what needs to be done. Also concerned that the units um, cho chosen might require frequent maintenance with multiple filter changes throughout the year. Um, and that the HEPA units, um, oh, and then finally, are the HEPA units for indoor hallways, cafeterias, libraries, and other non-classroom indoor areas? Um, I believe they've, they, I know we have HEPA filters throughout all of our buildings. Um, I don't know specifically, um, personally, if they're for, if there's specific uses for certain ones. Um, I don't know if John or if Renee, if you have any insight to that. You know, I don't, um, yeah, I know we've got, have them in our classrooms. Uh, I think we'd have to check with schools to see, you know, kind of how the allocation went to these other areas. But I, I see that uh, link in the, the chat. So thank you. I'm going to open that up and grab that because that, that will help guide some of our, our uh, decisions with this. Great. Um, Carla, did you have another comment? Yeah. Otherwise, I have some. Yes, I have a couple. Um, Taylor Hall from Facebook. Um, she says, I want to push for response to intervention math to put back into place. I thought it all this year and I saw the huge difference it made for my students. I was so sad to hear it was cut this year due to budgeting. Great, so that is, um, so when we mentioned intervention uh, being in place through ESSER 2, um, so it, it looks a couple different titles, I guess, with it. You'll hear reading interventionist, math interventionist, RTI is one of the interventions. So there are RTI teachers. I know our schools are actively hiring 
Um, and, and RTI can look a little different, definitely for math, um, but it can get into reading and other, you know, academic support. So I, I would with your school and, and see, you know, what uh, interventions, additional intervention supports they're able to provide, but uh, every school is able to provide uh, intervention um, through this increase of ESSER two funds. So definitely check with your school for the specific title and, and uh, type of intervention that they're using. Um, we have a comment from Jill Ahern. Jill, did you want to unmute and ask, uh, provide your question, or would you like me to read it? I can, I can talk. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm yes. driving, so I'm unmuted. No, you're I'm perfect. Free, just so you know. Um, so I work with the Boys and Girls Clubs, um, and just kind of curious, are you going to consider partnering with them? We were a distance learning facility. Um, all six locations of our clubhouses since the pandemic hit in March of 2020. Um, we do after school power, power hours, so homework help, um, social emotional learning. Is there any opportunity who would we need to reach out to that we could possibly help partner for that after school program? Renee, I don't know if you have any direction on that, but I think Jill, um, I think if you could just reach out to me and I'll try to help connect you with with some of the offerings. Do you remember who you worked with? You said when this started at the beginning of the pandemic was there? Well, in the pandemic, we made the choice um, to open up all day. Um, on March 23rd, we opened up our Frank and Edith Morton, which is right next door to Doolin Middle School. Yeah. And um, we opened up all six locations to be a, a, a resource for all day, you know, distance learning, um, computers, the whole works. We upgraded our uh, internet, everything, um, to help provide that for our our kiddos. Um, and just wondering how we can get engaged with ESSER funds. Um, I know that we've done some reach out, and I know we have to have the input from maybe the principals as well. Um, I know the Boys and Girls Clubs up in the Valley um, do get ESSER funds from their schools. Um, so I just wanna make sure we're engaging with the right people. Our, um, our VP of program operations has worked very hard to try and do that. So I just wanna know, get the right connection. So maybe we can be of assistance. You know, we deal a lot with at-risk youth, so. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Renee, do you want to jump in? Any um, of this? Yeah, hi, Jill. I think that we can just take this one offline and maybe follow up with you Perfect. on that. We would love it. We okay. would love it. It might be a process, but, you know, we want to be there to help as well. Right. Thank you for that. Great. Thank you, Jill. Go ahead and just reach out to me. Um, you'll find my information on the TUSD website, but uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Um, okay. It wasn't in the original email, but you can send it to me, Jill. That I was the one who sent the original email, if okay. you'd like, or if you want. I know you're driving, so it may not be possible. Put your um, email address in the chat box, and then we'll be able to grab it from there. Either okay, way, I'll is be fine. stopping. I'll be stopping in a minute, and I will put it in there. Thank Wonderful. you. Appreciate thank, it. Thanks for thank you. you. Thank you so much, um, Carla. Did you have any more comments from uh, Facebook? Yes, I do. Uh, from Monique Salaya, will the students taking part in the virtual academy see any benefits of the ESSER funds or should the parents of those children even vote as they were the funds are allocated? Yes, yeah, so the vir virtual academy, I, I'm assuming it's the, the new Tuva School Tucson Unified Virtual Academy. So that uh, actually was funded. Uh, it's completely funded right now through ESSER funds. Uh, so the development of that um, really true is in response to COVID and the, the need for online learning. So right now that is funded through uh, ESSER funds. Uh, the computers the kids are going to be working on, if they're TUSD computers, that those would have come directly through ESSER funds. Um, but, at you know, it is a new uh, school, new program, I guess, being developed. So uh, and being virtual, you know, are, there are going to be needs. So I think uh, whoever asked that question, if they could just um, 
work with the coordinator. I think there's a senior coordinator who's who's running that and just ideas send them to the coordinator and um, yeah, if there are needs, we want to be able to use ESSER funds to, to meet some of the needs. Okay. Um, Carla, did you have any other ones? Otherwise I have a couple. Um, if you want to go ahead with one and then I go back to Facebook, I do have two more, oh, a couple more. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, this is um, a question from the Wood family. They say, do we know what the max class size for allowed in high school? Will be uh, will overcrowding in Rincon UHS be addressed and how? Um, as we learned with COVID, overcrowding is a health hazard and increases the speed of airborne communicable dis diseases. Um, how will this be addressed? Renee, um, do you know what we're at or John? Yeah, Renee, I'd be more. Um, so the class sizes are based on consensus um, at this point for next year. Uh, we will be waiting to see, you know, when school starts, what those class sizes are going to be. Uh, with kids electing to take the online option as part of the TUVA instructional model, um, those kids are still enrolled at those home schools, so that could have an impact on those class sizes um, once we see when school starts. Um, so I think this is just something that schools will be managing on, at, at a school by school level based on their schedule and their staffing and their resources. Great. Thank you, Carla. Do you have anything? Yes. Uh, this is from Hillary London. Uh, what is the long-term maintenance plan for technology? Will there be a central location for students to have devices fixed on site or who, stu or who sends them back for the to the manufacturers? Will there be devices such as headphones, chargers, day use of laptop checkouts? And when will broadband be updated to fully support the increased use? So right now, all of uh, the, like you're saying, the distribution and the repair, that's all through our technology services. Um, and that is, you know, there's been an immediate increase in the amount of work that they've had going. So um, that is still through our technology resources. Many of the schools, uh, some of these other items you're mentioning, like headphones and charging, uh, schools are actively ordering those through their ESSER dollars. Um, that is a new need, you know, as kids are bringing all these laptops into the school this year. So uh, principals are aware of it. They are actively um, planning for that. Uh, and so I, I think you're going to see a lot of that maybe being handled more at the, the school level as kids bring those into the school. But ultimately, in the background is our technology services. Uh, I don't have, I, I taken down some notes, you know, with, with some of the, like the broadband and, and different um questions like that. I don't have a, an answer for you on that right now, but um, that would be our technology services we can get some information from for you. Okay. Um, and I know that is, um, I'm on the team that we've just uh, re-engaged and how we're launching into next year for technology. Um, so that is one of the things we're starting our conversations with various partners as well as looking um, at what we can do internally and with our hotspots, with ESSER dollars, things like that, to um, help the connection for everyone. All right, any other questions or comments? I do not have any more. I have a couple, Leslie. Oh, perfect. Um, Tina Huerta uh, from Facebook, uh, would more funding for field trips be a consideration since this would be an effective way for healing and connection with the community? Okay, so yeah, I'm taking that down as a suggestion here. Um, one of the things we'll look at and something like that is, again, the, the connection to COVID, recovery from COVID. Um, so yes, I definitely took that down as a suggestion. Another question and suggestion that we have from BJD, how about fixing issues with old school buildings, vents in the classrooms? Okay. Uh, also taking that down, and, and that is a piece of, of as we've heard about the HEPA uh, filters and the air, and so that is um, definitely a, one of these mitigation strategies of trying to make sure the environment's healthy. So again, definitely took that down, venting and HVAC. All right. Um, I know uh, there's no other questions for the folks that are on Zoom, and it looks like most of the questions or all the questions that have have been or comments have been read um, from Facebook. 
Um, if there is anyone that um, comes up with something that they'd like to share, um, if they would please send it to, um, sorry, I have to think what it is, answers2020 at tusd1.org. And we'll take that email, we're compiling them all and um, sharing them with our um, ESSER team so that they make sure that they have all everyone's input. Um, anything else, Carla, that you have or um, was that the last comment that you got? Um, there was one I was answering, but um, I'll, I'll read it out. Um, Hillary has a, a follow up on the technology. She says, we are overwhelming tech services, leave, leaving it to individual school is problematic. Look at Vail and Morana's infrastructure for more streamlined service. So um, I believe, John, you want to take down the suggestion and to move forward. Perfect. All right. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Great. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate your ideas and, um, you know, we're excited to be able to use these funds to, you know, using, utilizing people's ideas, lots of different input that's come. Um, if this, again, as I said, if you have anything else you'd like to share, please send us the email at answers2020 at tusd1.org and uh, we will share that. Otherwise, um, have a great night. And uh, we look forward to school starting on August 5th. Thank you. Um, John and Renee, will you hold on, and Carla, will you hold on one minute? Yes, I'm finishing up the video.